Howdy folks, Michelle Valancourt coming to you from uh, Morel. Apologize for the shaky video, using my phone to do this one up real quick. Um, so I'm putting water in my sump tank for my aquaponics. Um, it's been a bit of a pain to get things cleaned out. Um, these tanks used to hold um, soybean mash and were let to sit kind of ugly over an entire summer before I got them. So it was probably two hours per IBC with a pressure washer to scrub them down to the point where they're mostly clean. Um, so I'm testing a technology up here, so I figure where I got to put water into my sump anyway, I'd uh, work on that. And that is a Vortex aerator. I've been experimenting with an airlift pump, um, but couldn't get it to work based on the numbers and designs I'd seen, so I'm still playing with it. But, um, so the idea here is you can see that I'm injecting water over here at an angle, which is causing the whole water mass to rotate. And eventually it hits the top of that pipe and drains straight down. In the process of doing that, there's a tremendous surface area that's being exposed to air. And then if we can view, zoom down inside, you can see the water pours down the pipe, gets tumbled up, and pours out down here. Now eventually this point is going to be underwater and what I expect to see coming out of that is an awful lot of bubbles. I've seen one fellow who is running a 2,000 gallon system on the basis of a 50 gallon drum essentially set up like this um, running as a what he calls a hydrocyclone aerator. Essentially you get the water spinning in a whirlpool and the turbulence grabs oxygen, churns it up into the water, and throws it down. And by putting your outfall pipe below water level, and that's going to be probably a full 15 centimeters below water level where it's coming out now, that's going to give lots of time for that dissolved oxygen to get into the water for the sump. So a well aerated sump means that the sump never goes anaerobic, and thus the uh, water going from the sump into what will eventually be the fish tank, this beast here, will be uh, well aerated before it actually goes in and touches the fish. What I'm hoping is that by using a moderate performance um, air pump in my solids lift overflow, that I will be able to double aerate my water for very little cost. I'll run an air pump for the slow, just to pick up the speed of the, uh, the suction on the slow, and then um, I'll uh, run the Vortex aerator um, to get water moving here. So that's the initial plan. Um, obviously no plan of battle survives contact with reality, but uh, we'll see what actually comes out of it. I need to see what happens in terms of bubbling and what have you as the pump, um, sorry, as that pipe actually gets under water level. But once I do, um, I'll have a better idea if this is gonna work. Now obviously I'm using a garden hose uh, to fill this. It's not running in nearly as fast as my uh, as my pond pump would run water into here. And I'm using some awfully big pipe to do it, so I'm getting more splatter than I am thrust. But it is still actually forming a very slow cyclone. So I'm hoping that as things pick up, it'll run better. So uh, yeah, more to come and I'll let you know what I uh, how things go. Howdy folks, um, so a few minutes later, uh, water level is up, I realized that for some reason I didn't have the tap open as wide as I was, so the rate of flow is much higher now, uh, so pumps come, uh, the uh, sump levels come up. You'll notice a fair amount of um, bubbles coming out of the end of that pipe, which implies that, yeah, there's air getting dragged down into the water via the, uh, the, the hydrocyclone or, or um, vortex aeration. Um, it's also as much a function of the way that the amount of water I'm putting into this thing. You can see now much higher rate of flow, um, so there's a lot of aeration happening just as it comes out, the initial splash contact there, um, and that's the uh, the overflow cyclone, um, the water shearing down, and you can see there's a lot of opportunity for the air and water to mix. So the combination um, also seems to be moving the water in the sump at a fairly decent rate, you can see. Um, you know, some things floating past in the water, just odds and sods. Um, I've got a few, I've got a few maple trees nearby, so you see maple leaves going by. 
Um, so, yeah, um, without having a dissolved oxygen meter, which I don't have, they're expensive, 500 bucks, um, there's no really quantifiable way to say, you know, what I'm actually achieving with this. But from a perspective of, you know, bubbles in water, um, yeah, okay, this seems to be generating bubbles in water. Um, I'll have to see once the whole system is up and I've got fish in tanks, if that's, you know, if we're actually helping things out or not. Um, see how the fish deal uh, when I get up to the stocking levels I'm looking at. Um, initially it's going to be relatively easy, I'm just going to put a couple of goldfish in just as a starter position, um, because goldfish are cheap. Um, and then I'll be moving up to, uh, to trout, I suspect. Um, and, uh, yeah, so as this goes on, I'll keep an eye on it, and as my stocking density increases, I'll look for signs of either enough or not enough oxygen in the water. But, uh, this looks promising. That's a fair amount of constant stream of bubbles coming out of the end of that pipe. And some of the bubbles, actually, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but reach almost all the way down to here. So that's a good 18 inches, 45 centimeters, if not 2 feet, 60 centimeters. So, uh, now, and those are very microfine bubbles. You know, the biggest bubbles, of course, you can see are just coming out right at the end of the pipe, straight up. But there's a lot of microfine bubbling in the water in between these two points. Um, that's coming up in a constant cascade. So, that's a good indication. It's your microfine bubbles, of course, that the smaller the bubble, the more, uh, the more of the bubbles, the more air, actual air is being moved into the water, the more oxygen is being moved into the water. So, looking good so far. So, yeah, there we have it. Um, cyclone, uh, sorry, a vortex aeration or hydrocyclone aeration, depending which version of the, the name you prefer. Again, I'm just doing this with a garden hose right now, just to, but I expect this is the kind of rate of flow I would see from my, uh, my pond pump once it's up and running. All right. Signing off. Thanks very much. All the best. Howdy, folks. Back again. Um, revision number next. So, what I've done is, just one second while I steady my camera here, is on the bottom of the drop pipe going into the water, I've put a 45 degree sweep, and then that leads to a long pipe which goes straight to the bottom of the tank. The idea here is that I want to drive that oxygenated water as deep into the bottom of the tank as possible to ensure that there aren't any um, anaerobic spots. Originally what was happening is I was coming out of a 45 and it was turning um, and sort of driving water into the mid into the mid depth, but that really wasn't going to fix the real problem that I was trying to solve, which was preventing anaerobic spots in the, uh, in the tank. In the, so. I'm experimenting with um, a long, uh, a long sweep, 45 that goes straight down to the bottom. And again, oh, the glare not really hard to see here, but there is a very, very fine stream of micro bubbles coming off the top of the pipe. So it's uh, what that tells me is that um, all of the air is being completely basically forced into the water, um, except for a little itty bitty bit, um, by the water coming down behind it, and the pressure of, uh, that's 60 centimeters of water, I believe. So, um, you know, still swirling. Um, pond pump running down here. Hose comes up and into the side. 90 degree outfall, pushing water in. And there we go. And so you can see there's a, a fair amount of air being pulled down. You can see the, the way the, the top of that is fluctuating. I'm not seeing burping or anything to suggest that air is being forced back up the pipe. So all of that air, for there not to be bubbles down there, would suggest to me that, yeah, um, that what's got to be happening is that the air's got to be being pressured into the water at low depth. So, yeah, 
Anyway, folks, just uh, another tack on for the video I was doing. Um, trying to come up with better and better. So uh, I hope this uh, I hope this helps out somebody. Uh, I'm finding it fairly interesting because if this is actually doing what I think, then uh, it's a relatively cheap way of driving air deep in without having to spend for money for a Venturi or whatever. Essentially, that's the Venturi. Um, yeah, for those folks who are probably going to want to know, um, the gravel over here is my seed batch. Um, I'll be using that to set up one of my grow beds. It's just a little bit that I want to get going now so that the beneficial bacteria has a chance to start on the colonization process before I set the grow bed up. I've got a little bit of uh, more work to do. I need to raise this bed up one more height of cement block to get it to the level I need it to be so that my uh, my gravity my gravity flow system will be at the right height. So it needs to be uh, the height of one more cinder block up, so about that high. So once that's done, then uh, I'll get water flowing between all three. Alright, thanks again.